This is the front room of 78 Derngate. It just looks fantastic, doesn't it? And it's dark and it's mysterious, which kind of lends itself to the subject of our last film tonight. It's about a chap called Alan Moore, who's a comic book legend. He's written stories for Batman and Superman, and his work's been turned into Hollywood movies. He's transformed the American comic book industry. But he takes his inspiration from his hometown, which is right here in Northampton. Blimey! Superman, wait! Yeah, give me up, yeah! You haven't begun! Back. They're heading for Earth! Then we may all find ourselves on the losing side! Yeah! Just get in the coach. Well, right here would have been the doorstep of 17 St Andrews Road, where I grew up. Northampton-born Alan Moore is a giant in the world of comic books. He's won loads of awards, several of his books have been turned into films, and he's also written classic stories about Batman and Superman. Here we go, Luffy, Luffy. I had a blissfully happy childhood. There was no talk of love or affection because you really didn't need to talk of love or affection. These were words that you tended to reserve for Christmas cards. Uh, your parents didn't need to tell you that they loved you. They didn't need to give you a hug. You would have probably been quite alarmed if they had. Alan proved to be a bright youngster who quickly discovered a passion for reading. I joined the library by the time I was five and I'd naturally gravitated towards mythology, fairy stories, Arthurian romances, the legends of the Greeks and Romans and the, the Norse legends. Um, and we, like every other home in the neighbourhood, we used to have the full spectrum of British comics that were available at the time. The Beano, the Dandy, the Bees of the Topper. With all his success, Alan Moore could have turned his back on this country and headed for America and the bright lights. Instead, he prefers to live in Northampton, a town he loves. But it's not all been plain sailing. His school days ended under a very dark cloud. At the age of 17, I became one of the world's most inept LSD dealers. Um, and the problem with becoming an LSD dealer is that if you're sampling your own product, your view of practical reality will probably become horribly distorted and you may end up believing that you have supernatural powers and are completely immune to any form of retaliation or prosecution. This was not the case. Not surprisingly, Alan was expelled from grammar school. A series of boring, dead-end jobs followed, including cleaning toilets in a Northampton hotel. Throughout this dark time, Alan was honing his writing skills. Eventually, a local paper paid him £10 a week for a cartoon strip called Maxwell the Magic Cat. Delroy, we've got to do something. We can't let these redundancies go on. We've got to organise. I suggest a series of wildcat strikes. How do you mean? Well, a sort of work to rule. See, the strips will still appear in the North Ants Post, but they won't be funny. So, what else is new? To say that I drew Maxwell the Magic Cat is probably being too kind to my drawing abilities. I realised that I was nowhere near good enough or fast enough to actually succeed professionally as a cartoonist. So Alan decided to concentrate solely on writing and was soon selling stories to a number of British sci-fi comics. After winning several awards, America sat up and took note. Working for the legendary DC Comics, Alan transformed classics such as Batman and Superman. I think the fact that I was bringing literary values to the writing of comics was probably the thing that startled everybody and which gained me much of my reputation. But I, yes, I was influenced by the comics that I'd read during my childhood and teenage years, but I was also influenced by the incredible number of grown-up authors that I'd read since then. Alan hasn't just been content breathing new life into existing titles, he's created many original and groundbreaking stories himself. One of the most successful is The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It was the idea of taking 
famous Victorian fantasy characters like, for example, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man and putting them into a kind of an ensemble together, which, while a fairly simple idea in its inception, quickly grew into a fantastic literary melange in which almost every fictional figure or place that you've ever heard of are all existing somewhere in the same universe within the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which has been incredible fun. Madam, please do not take that tone with me aboard my own ship. It is simply that having provided Mr. Bond and his employer with their cabarite, I find I do not trust them. Quickly, we must open the main hatch and let him in before someone notices him. Although Alan doesn't illustrate his books, he has a very clear idea what the pictures should look like. So, in addition to writing the story, Alan makes extremely detailed direction notes for the illustrator to follow. Page 18, panel 1. Now a four-panel page. In this first panel, we see Mina, full figure to the right of the panel, as she throws the bucket or can of whitewash in a great white arc towards the left of the panel where we see it splash against some sort of invisible barrier in the air. No dialogue. I'd have to say that you can get ideas from anything. As long as you understand all of the components that a story needs, then any one of those components can generate a story. Um, you could perhaps come up with a clever sounding title. That alone is enough to grow a story from. Another big success was a book called From Hell, which is about the infamous serial killer Jack the Ripper. Alan set out to tell a familiar story in a completely new way. For one thing, I wanted to concentrate upon the victims, who are real women whose lives are almost completely overlooked in any portrayal of the crimes. They are simply there as ripper fodder. I wanted to talk about their lives. Most especially, I wanted to talk about the society that they lived in. I wanted to use the Jack the Ripper murders as a way of talking about the entire of Victorian society, its poverty, its unfairness, its dreams, and its nightmares. Quite recently, I, I had a heart stroke. Did I tell you that? It caused aphasia, a fluxion of the brain's right side that yields hallucinations. Netley, I saw God. I knelt before him, and he told me what to do. For more than 30 years, Alan Moore has arguably been the most original and creative voice in the comic book industry. Other big hits have included V for Vendetta and the critically acclaimed Watchmen. My approach to writing um, is never give the audience what they want because the audience don't know what they want. That's why they're the audience. It is the job of any artist or writer to give the audience what they need, which is not the same thing as what they want. It's basically myself that I'm writing all of this stuff for because I think that if you try to second guess anything as amorphous as a hypothetical audience, you're almost certainly going to go wrong. Alan's latest project is much closer to home. He's left superheroes behind as he works on an epic historical novel called Jerusalem, which will be set in and around Northampton. Writing is the supreme enjoyment. Um, there is something so thrilling about being able to generate an entire world, an entire cosmos inside your head. I could carry on working for another 50 years. I, mean, I will be 104 by then, but I could easily carry on working for another 50 years without ever running out of ideas. That's Inside Out from the Derngate Museum in Northampton. See you next week for three more surprising stories.